Let's get it started with who's in and who's out. Our NFL insider Ian Rappaport, you can answer a couple of these questions, starting with the Giants. Hey, what's Saquon Barkley's status for Sunday's game versus the Broncos? Saquon Barkley has cleared every hurdle along the way. Of course, coming back from a major knee injury, there was obviously some doubt whether he would even make it to this point. All he had to do was participate in the padded practice, get through Wednesday, get through Thursday, get through today. Sounds like he has. Would not be surprised if we see the old Saquon Barkley maybe in glimpses out there this week. He is expected to play a very good situation for Saquon Barkley. He has made it back. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz, another player who at some point in this uh, training camp, we thought there's no way he's going to be there week one. Who's going to be the cold starter? Is it going to be Jacob Eason? Is it going to be Ellinger? No, no. It's going to be Carson Wentz expected to start now for the Colts. Incredible. Just four weeks from foot surgery. He is good to go. There was a little question about Austin Eckler earlier in this week, too. Didn't, didn't practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday, was dealing with a hamstring injury. And, man, those can be tricky. The initial word was that it was just a precaution. He was going to be fine. And new Chargers coach Brandon Staley saw him in practice today, said he is optimistic about Austin Eckler playing. He was listed as questionable, but he is expected to play on Sunday. All right, Ian Rappaport answering the questions right off the bat. That's how you get it started, Ian. Thank you. Right now, let's get to our total access game of the week, y'all. They're back, and it's a good one. It's Browns Chiefs. I cannot wait to see this matchup. Let me tell you why. You got the class of the AFC with the Chiefs and the Browns. The Brownies, the dark horse favorites to win the AFC. Mm -hmm. You heard me right. All right, JJ and Sean, both teams have uh, players on offense, but man, the Chiefs have just been next level the last few years. Only the Bucks and the Raiders really were able to shut them down their uh, last, uh, last season, rather. So, JJ, I'm going to start with you. How can the Browns' offense keep pace with the Chiefs? Well, it's going to happen because of their defense. I think this defense for the Browns is going to be very stingy. So, I know everybody sees Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and you see Tyreek Hill, and you think automatically 30. Pump your brakes because this defense coming in there with Miles Garrett, the addition to Clowney, they have a lot of upgrades on that defense. They are going to make it hard on the Kansas City Chiefs. And as Sean knows, being two offensive players, what you hate most is being a, going up against a very good defense early in the season because you're try, still trying to figure out your identity, what you're going to be on the offensive side of the ball. And the Chiefs are running into a very good defense in this Browns defense. I think they are going to slow them down. I do not think they're going to give up the explosive play. They are going to make this game close. I do not think that they're going to go out there and put up 40, 35, the old Chiefs that we used to putting up. The Brownies is coming in there. They're going to play some defense to help their offense out. Yeah, JJ, no doubt about it. That's question number one is have the Chiefs figured out how to protect Mahomes? Our lasting image of the Super Bowl was Mahomes running for his life. When Eric Fisher went down with the Achilles injury left tackle, they did not have an answer. So, look, they, they, they signed some offensive linemen uh, in, in the offseason. They brought in Joe Tooney from, from the Patriots. They drafted Creed Humphreys, who will make his first start at center. So you've got a rookie center, and then at right tackle, they've got some guys banged up. Mike Rembers is battling through some injuries. That right side of the offensive line has not been fixed. This will be a great litmus test for the Chiefs' offensive line against this Browns' defense. And for the Browns' offense, let's just fa let's face it. Look, you're not going to ask Baker Mayfield to go throw for throw, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes. So give me Big Chubb. Give me Chubba Wubba. I want to see Nick Chubb <laughs> dominate this offense and this game. And when you look at the Browns' offensive line, they've got one of the best O-lines in the league right now. Joel Batonio, Wyatt Teller holding it down at guard, J.C. Treader in the middle, Jedrick Wells and Jack Conklin, one of the best right tackles in the game right now. That is how you beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. You keep him on the sideline. You keep him over there sipping that Gatorade. Here's the, here's the deal. J.J., they got to get this game into the fourth quarter, and then they let Nick Chubb eat. You know what he does in the fourth quarter? Oh, all he did last year was lead the NFL in yards per carry in the fourth quarter. Ten yards a carry. So give it to Chubb in the fourth quarter. I know who Sean's picking. I know who Sean's picking. Sound yeah, like he's picking the You can see it here in case you can't see the JJ, screen. JJ, I, it is. JJ, I, I, I teed it all up there saying how <laughs> the Browns can win and how they could win. I gave you the formula, but I didn't say they're going to win. I'm giving the Chiefs the win. Give me 35-28, KC. Oh, 
There it is. All right, JJ, mm, don't say another word. We're going to save your pick and mine for a little later in the show. Just a clue for y'all at home. We have another very fun segment that's back. That's all I'm going to say. We'll see it a little later. But, Sean, another huge matchup, of course, we have is Steelers and Bills. Which offense has the edge here? Well, look, I, I like what Buffalo is, has done with Josh Allen. And I'm going to say that the Bills have the edge offensively because they've been together. This is their fourth year now. Josh Allen and Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator. So they hit the ground running in training camp. And they're working on, you know, J.J., you know this. Man, when you go into year four as an offense, you're just – polishing things you're tweaking little adjustments and things how can we hide this how can we make this play better so you see that guy right there Stefan Diggs led the league last year in receiving yards so I can't wait to see Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen pick up where they left off last year oh and, and you added Emmanuel Sanders to go along with Cole Beasley who was kicking butt in the slot dropping bars on people yeah this offense is for real I can't wait to see him yeah, for me, and I know Pittsburgh fans is going to get mad at me, but this one's not even close. I mean, did we watch the Steelers' offense last year? They had no clue who they were. They couldn't run it. They were trying to throw the ball all over the yard. The Buffalo Bills' offense cannot be stopped. You have an MVP candidate and Josh Allen back there throwing the football and doing this right here with his legs, being able to get outside the pocket and make plays with his legs. You already talked about the addition of Emmanuel Sanders, who can do everything just like Stephon Diggs can. He can go deep. He can run all the intermediate routes. And then you have Cole Beasley in there on the third corner on the linebackers, just getting separation. He's an excellent route runner. And obviously Stephon Diggs out there. But this offense for the Buffalo Bills, the only person that's going to people that's going to stop them is themselves, if they shoot themselves in the foot. But the Steelers don't have a chance. It's not too many teams in the National Football League that have a chance of stopping the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills offense is serious. Okay, I want you guys to understand how serious I take this Bills offensive team, by the way, that plays in the same division as my home squad. My way too early prediction was for the Bills to go to the Super Bowl and Josh Allen to win MVP. Lots of love for Bills Mafia there, just saying. Enough of those early predictions, though. How about we pick some games here and we are starting with Steelers Bill Sean who wins this one and what's the score MJ give me Bills 33 Steelers 27 I think Josh Allen's legs end up being the difference in this game Look, we know TJ Watt just got his monster contract they've got Melvin Ingham on the other side he's gonna have to find a way to outrun those guys on a couple of different plays and I like their young pass rushers that Buffalo Bills picked up in the draft Greg Russo and Boogie Basham getting after Ben and that new offensive line that he's got in front of him. I'm with you, Sean. I just don't think the Steelers have enough, man, especially early in the season, man. I have Buffalo in this game, 38-21, coming out here with a bang, getting a big-time win. Over a good football team, they're going to let people know they're the real deal, though. I like Buffalo in this one. We're starting game picks, and we're all in agreement. I, too, have the Bills winning this one, 35-21, the final in my book. All right. We got another one to pick here, guys. Seahawks, Colts, Carson Wentz taking the field with his new squad. Who wins, Sean? I got the Seattle Seahawks in this one, MJ, and I think Russell Wilson, you give him a chance at the end of the game, you give him a chance with the football and enough time, he's going to find a way to get a win. I think he and DK Metcalf, uh, I think they light it up, and I know the Colts are a very physical team. I just don't know if they have enough offensive firepower, and I don't know if they've been together long enough with Carson Wentz to be able to keep up with the Seattle Seahawks. Give me Seattle 28-24. Mm -hmm. Well, I disagree with Sean on this one. I am going Colts. I am taking the Colts in this one. I like Carson Wentz being back under the center, but not only that, defense. That is how they win games, defense. And that's what they're going to bring to Russell Wilson. Defense, they're going to be after him all game long. I said it before, early in the season, you do not want to go up against big-time defenses. Colts win this game 35-28 in a close one. I like the coach. You see my man flexing up there. You see the linebacker. He about to come get him. He's about to come get him. This is why it starts to get spicy. I actually do have the Seahawks winning 30-25, to the final here. All right, one more. Chargers, Washington, 2020 Rookies of the Year going up against one another in this one, Sean. 
Look, I, I think Washington's got the best front seven in the entire NFL. And my big concern is for Justin Herbert. You've got a rookie left tackle on Rayshon Slater, and your right tackle, Brian Belaga, is a little banged up. That's not exactly what you want going up against the Minister of Defense, the Washington football team right now. So Chase Young, he's looking at his chops. Give me Washington 20 over the Chargers 14. I just cannot go against the young fella, man. I seen what the young fella Justin Herbert did last year. I just cannot go against him. He's too phenomenal. He showed us that he can make every throw. He can will his team to victory. It's week one. He has Mike Williams. He has Keenan Allen. He has all these weapons. Derwin James is back in the building on that defense. I like the Chargers in this one going up. I'm just not a believer in Fitz Magic. Is Fitz Magic going to make a couple throws? Yes, but I'm not a believer. I have the Chargers in this one big coming out week one, winning 35 17. Charges. Wow, that is a big difference there. I do have the bolts as well, but I have it way closer because if we learned anything last year was not to sleep on this Washington football team defense. I have this just going by one. 21-20 Colts in this game. A crazy finish in Tampa last night and yet completely on brand for Tom Brady. JJ, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, I loved everything I seen from the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody already knew what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to be. But for Dak and the Dallas Cowboys to come in there and have an opportunity to win that game in the fourth quarter, and if they run the ball when they have it on their last drive three times in a row, they probably do come out of that game with a W. But it's this guy right here, Dak Prescott. Looks phenomenal. Everybody, is his shoulder all right? Is his ankle all right? Well, Dak came out here and said, all oh, y'all chill. Everything is all right. I'm that dude. <laughs> And I just put myself in week one on MVP watch if I keep doing this. 88 getting busy, 19 getting busy, and number four was definitely getting busy. Dak played special last night. The Cowboys are going to be problems, MJ. I would have loved to see them capitalize on those turnovers. That would have made such a huge difference in this one, but you're totally right. They just put everybody on watch here. The Cowboys offensive line, by the way, was without Zach Martin, of course, last night. They will be without another O-lineman for the next five games. Lyle Collins is suspended for violating the league's substance abuse policy. You can head it over to NFL.com for more on that story. Thanks, JJ. Meanwhile, Cam Newton opened up today about getting released and Mac Jones getting the starting role in New England. Newton said his release came as a surprise. Cam saying that he feels that Jones would not have been comfortable with him as the backup. Ooh. So whether or not Cam's assessment is accurate here, well, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to ponder at home. What we do know is that the rookie is getting his first start on Sunday against the Dolphins. Sean, do you think he can outduel Tua in Foxborough? Oh, yeah. I think give me mac and cheese all day long <laughs> with this one. I'm carb loading, and I'm not scared of the dairy intake with Mac Jones. I, I can't remember the last time a quarterback competition ended up in not just one quarterback winning the job, but the other quarterback not even on the team. I mean, he, he didn't just beat Cam out. He, I mean, he basically got him cut. So I, I look at Mac Jones, and I was up at a joint, couple of the joint practices that the Giants had with Mac Jones, and it was when Cam Newton had to sit out. He wasn't even there for the first day. Mac Jones took every single snap, and this kid did not blink. I don't think I've seen a rookie with that much poise, with that much accuracy, and with zero hesitation with where to go with the football. It didn't matter if it was a blitz, if it was a play-action pass. I was very impressed with Mac Jones, his ability to command the entire offense. He was getting tight ends lined up in formations. He was getting the mic call. He was getting protection set up. Things you just don't see rookies doing this early on in their career. And I, I'm, I was so impressed with Mac Jones. I think he's going to continue that. And I think his offensive line is built to win. You know, we've heard nothing but five-star Yelp reviews on Mac Jones all uh, preseason leading up to this. I'm going to go ahead and reserve my thoughts on this until later in the show, along with a little message I have for my fin, Sean. All right, time now to predict the points. We are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Cynthia Freeland in the house, and she has, of course, crunched the numbers. So just listen up. Cynthia, let's start with the Seahawks Colts game. Will there be more or less than 48 and a half points? Ooh, I have more in this one. I have 50 points in this game. Interestingly enough, I would feel better about all of this if Eric Fisher, the left tackle, for the Colts were playing, but Jonathan Taylor predicts to be a big difference maker in this game as well on the side of the Colts. I think his ability to keep the ball moving forward means that Carson Wentz will be more effective, which means there'll be half to more points on both sides of this game. 
This is why I keep Cynthia on speed dial on Fridays. Okay, we'll finally see Aaron Rodgers under center again, Cynthia. Will the Packers and the Saints combine for more or less than 49 and a half points? Ooh, I think that's very low. I have 54 points. You know, models are very conservative. They do lots of averages. So when you see a differential that's like almost five points different, you got to look at it like once, twice, maybe three or four times. I think the interesting thing here is the efficiency of that Green Bay offense. Again, another left tackle that's not playing. I'd love it better if David Bakhtiari were there, but I still think both Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams will have big games en route to a nice big totaled game. All right, one more for you, Cynthia. Finally, Sam Darnold getting to face his old team. Will there be more or less than 45 and a half points scored in Panthers Jets? Well, if you're a fan of offense, then I am the Friday version of Susie Sunshine here because I have another game that I think a lot of offense is going to occur in. I think the interesting part here, the return of Christian McCaffrey, this nice storyline of getting Sam Darnold efficient against his old team. I even like a Robbie Anderson touchdown in this one. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. All right, throwing out a few names there. Cynthia, more on all three of these. Hey, if y'all are watching and you like a lot of points on the board, clearly this is your weekend. Thank you, Cynthia. We're going to see you in a little bit. Uh, all right, listen, how about we get you into a little uh, three-point stance, mentally that is, for old time sakes here. Can you give me three things the Saints need to do to upset the Packers on Sunday? Yeah, sure, MJ. It's week one. Of course, offensive lineman wakes up in a three-point stance. So, look, <laughs> if you're the Saints and you want a shot at beating the Green Bay Packers, look, here's where it starts. It starts where last season ended for Green Bay, right? Get after Aaron Rodgers. Get him on his back. We saw the Bucks sack him five times in the NFC Championship game. This Saints defense is very underrated. Now, that guy right there, Cam Jordan, uh, that's actually Trey Hendrickson, who's no longer there. But you see them getting sacks on the quarterback right here. There's Cam Jordan right there. That's something that they're absolutely going to have to account for. The Packers still don't have Bakhtiari. And I think when you look at Billy Turner at right tackle, he's really more of a guard. So he's kind of playing a little out of position. That's absolutely how the Saints are going to find a way to, to win this football game. Get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. And look, don't sleep on Demario Davis, one of the best linebackers in the NFL. He is a straight-up thumper. So careful if you're coming across the middle. The second thing the Saints have to do, here's the second prong of this three-point stance. The Saints O-line are some bad dudes, all right? They, they call it the Big Easy down there, but look, these guys do not take anything for granted. They make it look easy, even though it ain't. I think when you look at how good the tackles have been on the outside, Teron Armstead and Ryan Ranchick, they've been two of the best pass-blocking tackles in the entire NFL, and I love what they do on the edges. But inside, the guards are very physical, and I think Alvin Kamara... He does a great job of setting up the outside zone and then cutting it back against the green. So this offensive line has to take over the game. All right, the third and final prong of this three-point stance, we've got to talk about the quarterback. Right, MJ? I mean, at some point in time, Jameis Winston is going to have to make a throw like that. All right, he's going to have to make a deep throw, and he's going to have to take care of the football. But this is what they're going to need. You've got to – if you want to beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, there's got to be at least two signature throws that Jameis Winston makes. He's going to have a guy open. You know Sean Payton's going to scheme a couple of big home run plays. You can't miss. And Jameis, we know it. You know, look, if you want to eat that W at the end of this game, you got to take care of the rock, buddy. Oh, I'm up now. I was <laughs> trying to figure out what Sean is over there talking about. All that madness. He's crazy. I was dazed and off a little bit. Man, stop it, man. This one here is over. Week one is an L for the Saints, man. Packers, Aaron Rodgers coming in the building, man. Starting the season off with a bang. Hey, I see you tried to talk yourself into all that, Sean. I do. And I know you probably picked the Saints because you're like, great. You know, I'm going to let you know Packers finna lose. But absolutely not, man. AR-12 is going to get the job done. I mean, you talk about quarterback for quarterback. I mean, there's no way Jameis Winston is going to outplay Aaron Rodgers. Hold on. So, Sean just gave us his whole dissertation. Are you going to come on here and, and nod at it? Come on, JJ. Fine. Listen, you've argued your sides. Who wins it then, James? You sort of alluded to it there. I got the Packers in this one big. 35-17 pack. I think the Pack get this one done big. Offense gets off to the right to the right start. Put up a bunch of points, man. Get a couple turnovers on defense. They they find a way to win this game big. 
JJ, I love me some Aaron Rodgers, but man, I wanted to hand him a Weineken and some French fries to go with that whambulance sound that I hear right now. What's that sound I hear? Is that a, is that a whambulance? After all, that's what we heard all offseason and all summer. Aaron Rodgers, don't you go, don't you go throwing a donut against these Saints. Give me the upset alert. I'm taking the Saints. I'm taking Alvin Kamara. I'm taking the best O-line in the NFL. Give me them Saints. That's right. Jameis Winston eating that W. Yes, I mean, after that entire presentation, I would expect you to pick the Saints here. But you know what, Sean? I am dying to see what this evolution of Aaron Rodgers looks like back on the field after a crazy offseason, as you mentioned. I do have the Packers winning this one. 28-21, my final score. Uh, Also, Aaron Rodgers happens to be my fantasy QB. A little more motivation, maybe, A.A. Rod? I hope so. Speaking of which, let's get, give out some fantasy advice presented by FedEx. So here are some of Adam Rank's fantasy suggestions for week one. You got quite a few options here. That top one right there, his advice here, hurt Jalen Hurts. You got more options on the other side. You're looking for receivers. Cooper Cup is on this board from him uh, there as well. Ground game, Raheem Mostert ready to get back out, out of the outfield for uh, the backfield, rather for the 49ers. All right, Cynthia, come on back, my friend. Some more player projections uh, in a game we like to call runner pass. <laughs> Cynthia, I'll give you the player projection. You tell me if you're going to run with it or pass. So let's start with Matthew Stafford at one and a half touchdowns. Runner pass with it. Oh, I'm running right past that one and a half mark. Why? I think at least two touchdowns is in the forecast for him. My favorite stat about Matthew Stafford is that the play after being pressured, he has the best passer rating in the NFL over the last five seasons. Obviously, he was a line before. This is a better O-line now. But this means that if Julio Max somehow gets to him, it doesn't matter. The next, the next down's going to be fine. He can pass on it and, and be super effective. All right, that's fair. How about Odell Beckham Jr.? Three and a half receptions and half a touchdown, runner pass. Well, I'm also going to run with this, even though it has to do with passes. <laughs> run with both of them, in fact. Why? Well, when I look to see what's going to happen on this Chiefs game, one of the areas that you see on the injury report is, is Chris Jones there. We saw last season they were a little less aggressive up front with the pressure. This is a really strong O-line. It bodes well for Odell Beckham Jr. being targeted and being helpful in that catch and run game, which, which we've seen him be awesome at his entire career. Okay, finally, Cynthia, Derek Henry, are you running or passing on 113 and a half scrimmage yards? We were so happy with the, all of these overs, but now we're gonna we're gonna pass on this one. It's not an indictment of his talent. He's not. He's gonna lead the league in rushing yards this season. But I don't think this is going to be a system where he's going to get 113 every single game because there's a lot of mouths to feed. You've got AJ Brown. You've got Julio Jones. You've got a lot of different people to target. So this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Let's just put it that way. Just, just he's gonna be very effective, efficient. You're gonna still wanna absolutely start him in fantasy. All right, they got to spread the love a little bit there. All right, Cynthia, uh, you'll have plenty of more projections Sunday on game day morning. Dark and early, 6 a.m. Eastern for you, my friend. Go get some rest. All right, let's take a look at some game picks here. Uh, Why am I the only one picking the Dolphins against the Patriots? Am I shocked? No, not even a little bit. But Sean is the only one picking the Giants over the Broncos there. All in agreement there that the Rams will win against the Bears on Sunday. We can't wait for Sunday. Let's kick it to Cynthia and the guys for today's bucket list presented by KFC. Okay, guys, no one loves wings and a bucket of wings more than us so i want to know who is on your bucket list sean this weekend what should we look for oh yeah Cynthia, you're talking about food you came to the right guy look uh, i'll say this for any person out there who has ever been dumped boyfriend (laughs) girlfriend whatever they dumped you on your bucket list was you can't wait to show up with your new girlfriend or your new boyfriend (laughs) and show them what they missed out on. So give me Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson of the Carolina Panthers going up against their former squad, the Jets. And look, I, I know they're going to be playing, you know, Beyonce's Let Me Upgrade You as Zach Wilson walks out onto the field. But for Sam Darnold, this is going to be the best team he's ever been a part of. He's got the best talent around him. And I can't wait to see him in a functional offense with functional football players around him. I think he's going to impress. And I think Robbie Anderson has got some big plays up his sleeve. And give me that hot sauce to go along with that bucket. 
Ooh, I love the hot sauce for both of them. I totally agree. I love a Robbie Anderson touchdown as well. JJ, who's on your bucket list this weekend? On my bucket list, man, I'm, I'm taking a 20-piece, man. 20-piece hot wing, and that's on Trevor Lawrence, the number one draft pick. Listen, we've seen what he did in his last preseason game. He's going up against the Texans. I'm riding with him all the way. I'm saying four touchdown passes for this young fella. He is about to go off. I don't know how many games they're going to win. They only win one game last year, but I do know it was the very first game of the season. They're going to win the very first game of the season again. On his right arm, he's about to go to work, man. And I'll stand four touchdowns for this young fella. I see him going out there balling against the Texans. Did you just say four touchdowns? For Okay, great. Other people should put them in this fantasy lineup. Okay, so on my bucket list, mm. I'm kind of bringing the sauce. You can't have a good wing without the right kind of sauce. And I think Terry McLaurin is the sauce. I think he's going to be a top five fantasy receiver this week. I don't think we talk about him enough nationally. So I'm going to keep talking about him until everyone else catches on. And then I'll have receipts that I did it first. So when it comes to McLaurin, especially now that Curtis Samuel went on IR, I think this is going to be the target. I think this is going to be who makes the difference in this game. So I think that uh, we got to add MJ back to our list. We can't take all the wins for herself. MJ? Terry like we? <laughs> <laughs> we are ridiculous. Oh, MJ, help us out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Cue the upset alert. It's back. There's the siren, what I've been waiting to hear all preseason. James Jones, Cynthia Freeland, JJ, you're never afraid to shoot your shot here with these upsets. Cynthia, though, she's got the numbers backing her. JJ, I got to start with you, though. What team are you putting on upset alert this week? Well, I know Cynthia's numbers probably ain't going to agree with this one, but it's the <laughs> Brown. The Chiefs are on upset alert. The Brownies are going to win this game. The Kansas City Chiefs on upset alert. Too much defense. Too much ground and pound. They win this game 35-31. Brownies, too much Nick Chubb, too much Kareem Hunt coming down. Clowney coming at you. Too much, too much. I like the Browns in this one. You're crazy. It's going to be the Chiefs. <laughs> Although I do think it's closer than expected. It's maybe like a five-point game in favor of the Chiefs. No double-digit blowout. It's going to be closer because their secondary is improved. But you're crazy, man. That's not, nah, not going to happen. I got to blend the two together here because I agree with Cynthia. The Chiefs will win, but my score is closer to yours, 35-28, the final here. JJ, I know you have another team you want to put on notice. Both of you guys will be on my team next week, I promise you. But the next team that's on upset alert is the Titans. Listen, I know you got Julio Jones. I know you got King Henry. I know A.J. Brown over there, but I'm telling you right now, Kyler Murray and the Cardinals and Hopkins, Getting off the bus is going to be ready to play. Titans might go to the Super Bowl, but they are going to take the L in week one. Too much Kyler Murray. He's going to use his legs. He's going to get outside the pocket, make some, build some drives, extend some drives. I like the Cardinals in this one, man, winning this game and upsetting the Tennessee Titans. You know what, JJ? You're brilliant. We have exactly the same here. Now, the score is a little bit different. I have a much closer game. It is those big plays. I'm still not sold on this Titan secondary. I'm going to have to see it before I believe it. So for right now, I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins. I'm going with all of the receivers catching all of the passes. Those big game-breaking games, that's what's, that's what's going to be the deciding factor here. I'm with you. Well, dang. All right. Well, I did have the Titans, and I do. I'm sticking with it. My final score, 35-27. to 27. JJ, I want to remind folks, though, I know sometimes he goes a little off the rails, but listen, he knows what he's talking about. He got quite a few right last year. Can't wait to see the numbers this year, y'all. All right, we're about to close out this studio in Culver City, and what better way to take us out than for you guys to hype up the player that you want to make sure makes you look good this weekend, James. I'm going Jimmy G. Jimmy G, make me look good. You are playing the Detroit Lions. You have a big time offense, a lot of weapons. Jimmy G, I'm talking three, four, five touchdowns. Make me look good, Jimmy G. You go out here and ball out. You buy yourself some more time to keep the young rookie on the bench over there and watch you go perform. But Jimmy G, it's your time. Make me look good. I tell you what, JJ, Captain Morgan can make you look good, and they can certainly <laughs> help make me look good. But I'm talking to you, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. 
You could have been the MVP last year if it hadn't been for Aaron Rodgers up in Green Bay. Make everybody in Buffalo look good by coming out of the gates. I'm saying you've got 33 points in you against this Steelers defense. Don't worry about Mika Fitzpatrick. Don't worry about T.J. Watt. Just get it done, Captain Morgan style. All right, Miami Dolphins, I am literally your biggest cheerleader. Make me look good this week, all right? They left me alone. We'll see you back on Monday in our brand-new studio. Have a great week.